All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We are working on the return of the Jedi, the authentic TIE Interceptor. Uh, model kit being put out this year by round two under the MPC label. And as I said in my unboxing video, I'm very excited about this model kit because what they've done is they've taken the classic wings from the TIE Interceptor with their aggressive angular uh, cool silhouettes and they've paired it with the body of the TIE Fighter from 1997, a very well done TIE Fighter. So kind of combining those two parts, you get the TIE Interceptor that's being released by round two this year in 2023. All right, let's get right into looking at a little bit of the plastic. And of course, this is just like the TIE Fighter that I reviewed a little bit ago, the TIE Fighter that was originally in the twin pack set. So you can see the cockpit is done just with two sidewalls, a back wall, a seat, a pretty nice pilot. Now I've really taken to over exaggerating things on the inside of these cockpits, uh, just really kind of using washes to bring out the detail on the side panels, uh, kind of not quite taking the figure to black so you can still see all the details emphasizing those back panels with lots of contrast and the reason why is because it's so hard to see inside these cockpits um, that if you over exaggerate things you'll be able to see them just a little bit better after that we get the top half the bottom half very nice that these sprues meet the parts over here on a place that really won't be seen leaving some very nice sharp edges here where these two parts will meet. The bottom half of the TIE Fighter is the part that has the hole for the stand and you can make sure that you're pointing this in the right way uh, because the bottom of this cockpit assembly has a little post right here and inside you can see there is one hole rather than a slot so that post will fit in right there. Glue that in place and then you can put the top half of the tie onto it. All right, now if you want your top hatch to be able to open, you've got to install this clear part. And hopefully you can see kind of the way it works. Uh, but this back bar here, and then you have this plastic part that goes right on top of it and holds it in place. And if you can do it right, you can glue just those two gray pieces together. Try not to get any glue on that clear piece and it will hold that in place, but it will still be able to move and open up. If there's a tricky part to the build, it's probably just this. i uh, try not to get any glue on the clear part as you glue these parts together. All right, with our pilot and cockpit installed in the bottom half, and with our opening hatch installed in the top, we can join these two halves together. And we'll run just a little bit of glue down those seams. On the back of the TIE Fighter, we install the engine. And we have these little thrusters. It'll just go along the back like that. And very similar detail parts will fit along the front. And these last little parts, these are the blasters or the cannons that are going to fit in the bottom of the ship. All right, now we get to the fun part. Now, I do actually use Tamiya acrylics. I feel they airbrush really well. I thin them with just isopropyl alcohol, about one-to-one -one ratios. I feel it works really well in the airbrush. And Tamiya paints are really formulated to work on plastic model kits. I find that I don't need a primer 
unless I've got something really odd going on. So yes, I do spray my acrylics directly on the plastic. I've never had a problem, especially because I also use Tamiya masking tape. I've never had to pull up the paint. All right, now the paint color I generally use, I start off with Tamiya white. I use some sky gray to make a very light gray color. And then I add just a few drops of sky blue until it looks blue, really. Uh, both of these jars just kind of follow that formula. So just white, sky gray, and blue. Uh, here I made a couple different contrasting colors. I think this was for the Enterprise C. Uh, but once you start making a blue gray like this, you'll find yourself using it on all sorts of sci-fi ships. Obviously, TIE Fighters are a great one for this blue gray color. Uh, but Colonial Vipers use about the same thing. Uh, the Enterprise A has a lot of blue-gray accents, so I find myself just mixing up big jars of this kind of TIE Fighter blue-gray, and I use it on a ton of ships. build of the TIE Interceptor, this new 2023 release uh, by round two using some older MPC models. And I quite like it. Uh, of course, weather to taste. I really like uh, putting a lot of those panel lines and washes on this uh, just because it makes it look so aggressive and brings out a lot of the detail in the kit. You obviously don't need to weather it this much. 
And like I mentioned, a little hard to see in the cockpit, so we'll add a little bit of light. So you can see there we have our pilot inside it. But yeah, this, this kit definitely has a lot of detailing across it. Very easy to bring that out and very easy to get a good looking, aggressive looking Imperial TIE Interceptor. And of course, again, a model that builds up nice. You know, that's half of it. The other half is having fun during the build, which I definitely think I did. And let's see these two kits together. Here is the TIE Fighter. This is the most recent re-release from round two. And of course, those two kits look very good together. And clearly in scale with each other since they use the same main bodies. And of course, I love the TIE Interceptor because frankly, if you're an X-Wing going up against a TIE Fighter, you're not too worried. You're more maneuverable. You've got better firepower. But yeah, once that TIE Interceptor comes in, a little bit of a different story. And of course, any X-Wing is going to be terrified if they run into the TIE Advanced. Now, of course, this TIE Advanced or Darth Vader's TIE Fighter is in a different scale than these two. Uh, this is one of the more recent releases. This was a re-release by round two uh, about a year ago. A very classic kit. And of course, they upgraded Darth Vader for it. Let's see if we can see this Darth Vader. There's Darth Vader in that cockpit. Now, there is word that round two is going to make a 132nd scale standard TIE Fighter. They're calling it their Studio Series line. And it looks like it'll probably be one of the best made TIE Fighter model kits. And it will be this TIE Fighter in this scale. And hopefully, if that Studio Series does well, hopefully they will once again make some new wings for it and send it out as the TIE Interceptor. Was it a fun build? Yes. Do I think the model looks good? Yes. Uh, do I think it's a good model kit to get? Absolutely. And I'm definitely going to get a few more because I like doing the TIE Interceptor in a couple different colors. This is kind of the fan or non-canon uh, Royal Guard TIE Interceptor done all in red. Uh, this was kind of Bandai's release of the TIE Interceptor. And I'm much more prefer this size for the TIE Fighter. It just You can do a little bit more with it. I'm definitely going to pick up another one of these to do it in the red color scheme. Uh, there's also a version floating out there where you just do one red stripe. Uh, so a lot of possibilities in painting up the TIE Interceptor. And I'm looking forward to my next one. So definitely be on the lookout for the return of the Jedi, the authentic TIE Interceptor by MPC being re-released by round two. Once again, this is not that old snap kit from the 80s. It is the better upgraded TIE Fighter body from the late 90s with the TIE Interceptor wings. And it makes a very, very nice TIE Interceptor. And of course, a big thank you to everyone at All Scale Check Forums. A big thank you to Round 2 MPC AMT for letting me work on these review copies. And thank you guys for following the channel. Uh, this summer, we should have a handful of builds. Not all of them will be Round 2 builds, but you should get to see a handful of different Star Trek and Star Wars models. So thank you guys for following, and we'll be back soon.